Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean aka Uncle Frogface and welcome to today's video. If you're new here then welcome, if you're not new then welcome back. So I'm always excited to make videos but I am super excited today so you'll remember some months ago I reviewed the Kuliao Customizer, this thing here. Um, and it's a really, really nice engraving pen. Uh, it's completely cordless, really, really enjoyed using it. Um, I engraved on an acacia wood chopping board and uh, engraved a little mushroom on that. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up here. Go and check it out. Um, or you can stick around and see the brand new Kuliao Customizer version three. So this has been sent to me, and the reason why this is so special is this is a world exclusive review. It's the first official review of the Customizer version three. So I'm very, very happy to be doing this today. So I am going to turn the camera around and we're gonna have a bit of a side by side comparison, unboxing both the Customizer two and the Customizer three and see kind of the difference just in the packaging first, and then we'll get on to actually using the new tool. Oh, and before I forget, just like last time, you can get 15% off not just this, but anything on the Coolio website using the code SEAN. That's code S-E-A-N. Just enter that at the checkout for 15% off any product on the Coolio website. Welcome to my desk. Right, so let's start uh, by having a little bit of a side-by-side -side on both of these. So here we are. Here we have the customized version two and bits that came with it. Uh, so this was one package that came together. Here we have the customizer version three and it's all in one box. So, you remember when we opened this before, I think I've lost the plastic insert for this, but there was a little plastic insert here. This was sat inside of it. Um, then we have the charging cable. We have these extra burrs that were sent to me. Allen key to unlock the little uh, collet nut here that allows you to put in the bits. Uh, and then of course we have our 30 free engraving bits, which are lovely and not in the order that they were sent to me at all. They're, they've definitely been messed up and put in different ways, but hey, that's, that's just what it is. It comes with use, I suppose. So that's this one. And then this is the version three, which already, if I just shine here, can you see those lovely details on the front of the box there? It says vision, innovation. The design work on this is already miles, miles better than design work on this. So this, this of course is a portable tool. The, the only issue is that I don't really want to chuck that in my bag as it is. So I have to take the box and then that makes it a lot less portable because it's quite a large box for the tool. However, let's have a bit of a deep dive into this customer. So we've got some information on the sides, elevate your craft, what's in the package. But if I crack this open, it's just a nesting box, the same as the last one. But this is what we are presented with. So we have a little user manual, which didn't come with this one. Everything was um, online before. We have a little user manual here. We're gonna open it up, it's very brief but there is a QR code here and here where you can download uh, some instruction manuals on getting started with engraving and using the tool and lots of other things. But this also covers the basics of how to use the tool. Under the manual, we have our 30 engraver bits. So already much more compact because they are in the box that the tool is in rather than being a separate thing. We also have, I've not actually had a look inside here yet, but we've got our Allen key. We've got a couple of extra little collet nuts, uh, and then we have in this little bit of brown paper, I'm guessing it's gonna be some burrs. Yeah, so we have one diamond burr tool, which is the same as one of the tools that came in here. Yep, third one along. So you've got some extra, extra burr tools as well. Um, so very, very nice. Then we have down here our charging cable and we have this little black thing here, which I'm going to come back to later. Let's go on to the actual tool itself. So we are these side by side. 
you might see a few differences straight off the bat. So first of all, this, this little display here, this is a kind of a sticker that's stuck on, it covers the lights and it covers the button. So when we press this, so you see we have our lights. The top lights are the battery charge and the bottom lights are the power. So we've got high power, medium power, low power, off. Whereas with this one, this is much more sturdy. This is actually a kind of a formed piece of plastic. Coolio logo on there as well, which is really, really nice. If we press this, digital display. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I can see power three, fully charged battery, power two, power one. You can also hear a difference in these as well. So this is a new motor in a new one. It has a much higher RPM, so this can go up to 25,000 RPM, which is really, really impressive. And it just sounds much, much nicer. Listen to this, high power on the old one. High power on the new one. Sounds so, so much nicer. In fact, let me bring it right up to the microphone and you can listen to them. So, this high power. High power. So it's quieter and it just sounds much nicer. We've also got a new grip here. So it's slightly different shape, but it also actually has a grip, so it's much more comfortable to use. At least that's the thought. Anyway, I haven't actually got around to using it yet, so I'm going to be putting all of this to the test. And it's just a much sturdier build. So you can see here, this is the old one. We have another one of these little collet nuts here. If you undid this, this whole aluminium sleeve would slide off and you'd be able to get to all of the stuff inside. Um, whereas this one, it just feels much more solid. There isn't that nut there, so it feels nice and sturdy. Got the same charging port at the bottom, but again, this looks and feels much nicer. And even at the top, we've got a change in the little uh, kind of the receiver for our bits. So here we have a brass bit, and here we have a stainless steel bit. Um, you can see when we put them side by side that actually there's this extra bit on here and it just gives you a little bit more clearance to be able to see what you're doing without having that extra bit there. So that's kind of visually this all put together and I'm gonna pop this aside just for a second and show you a particular feature of this that I'm very happy about. So I'm going to take out, take out the, the little Allen key I'm just going to release this nut here just slightly and I'm going to take one of these bits. So let's take the first one here. Why not? I'm going to pop this in. Okay, so I've loosened up the nut here. I'm going to take this and I can put it just there and it, it's kind of loose. That's how the old one felt. But this one can push it in and it feels nice and snug. So you're not relying on the collet nut, but that obviously is going to lock it into place. I'm going to pop that in there. And I can also store this in here with a piece in it, which is great. But let's come to this bit. So this for me is one of the nicest features of this. And it's so simple. I have a cap, I have a cap for the pen that makes this an actual tool that I can pop in my bag and take with me, not worry about stabbing anything. So I'm super happy that just this tiny change has increased its use, really, because I'm now gonna be much happier taking this out of the house. Um, but I mean, even if I'm just using it in the studio, being able to pop it in there with a piece in, it's great, it's really, really nice. Last time when we tested the version two, I had a bunch of materials that I tested it out on just to see how it would handle. So I actually have pretty much the same stuff over on the side here. So I have a shell, I have a stone, 
I have a piece of metal, which is a uh, sharpener. I think it's aluminium um, or aluminum if you're in America. I have a uh, wooden popsicle stick as well. I have a piece of polymer clay. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick test on all of these. You can see where I used the, <laughs> the one last time. We got that little notch in there. I'm just gonna go ahead Okay, I can can honestly say, just I'm just gonna put some of this dust away. I am wearing a dust mask. Um, I can honestly say this feels much sturdier than the last one. The last one is a sturdy model. It's really good, um, but this this feels very smooth. Obviously, this is an engraving tool. It's not a cutting tool, but I am. Let's see if this will. Uh, there we go. I have been able to cut into this into this shell quite easily. There we go, that, that is actually engraving very nicely. Um, okay, so shell, tick. Let's try the wood. So again, I'm just going to... loosely, very badly, engrave my name on there. Of course, this is all at, at highest power. But that's that's just very quick, very nice. It's engraved on there. Let's test kind of its cutting. Very nice indeed. So wood, tick. Um, let's try on metal. That's very loud because I'm doing it on the desk. Let's try holding this. There we go, you can see that that has engraved incredibly quickly. Um, okay, let's let's try this stone. So this is a piece of sea quartz. Uh, so quartz crystal, fairly hard stone. I think you can see without very much effort there that is that is engraving. Yeah, I think you can see that that's very easily engraving on that stone as well, so very nice. I'm also letting you hear the sound of this as well, so you can hear kind of how the motor's doing with different pressure. I'm pressing fairly hard with this. Let's try polymer clay. You can see where I uh, cut into this last time and here as well. So let's try actually engraving. So it feels like this tool pulling it. Wow, yeah, look at that. There we go, so polymer clay, also no issue at all. I've actually got something extra with me today. So uh, I have been using my customizer version two for 3D prints. So for instance, if I'm making a prop like this, which is a Mandalorian fiber blade from the Mandalorian, um, then occasionally if I've got burrs or imperfections, then I will use that to take some of them off. For instance, 
Here is a button that I printed for a costume that I'm making at the moment, and it had some imperfections on the top. And I was very able, very easily able to go in and just knock back some of those and smooth it. And this does an, a super, super job at that. So I actually have over here a Benchy, which anyone who uh, 3D prints will be very familiar with. It's like a benchmark test to see how your printer is doing. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up on the side. It does a very good job at smoothing prints out. It's very, very nice. But you can also take off all of those little imperfections and pits and divots. I'm just going along with the side of this one. I probably should have used something a little bit, bit different. For instance, for instance, there's this one here, which is nice and flat, which means I'm going kind of parallel to it. Um, but yeah, you can see it actually smooths out very, very nicely. So any 3D printers out there, if any of you have got that hobby, then this is an incredibly useful tool for that as well. Okay, right, so we've kind of gone over the different materials. You remember last time when I used the Kulia version two, I engraved on an acacia chopping board. So I actually had two of those, and I said that I would use, uh, use the other one for another piece of engraving, so that is exactly what I'm going to do. So this is it here. It's nice and solid, so I thought I would do something nice and kind of seasonal. Uh, so I have drawn on the other side of this. This is a uh, gonk. So gonks are like little, little gnome men, and I've just drawn him on here with some pencil. And I'm going to spend some time just engraving this onto here. And whilst I do that, I'll talk about the uh, the tool and some other bits and pieces about it and just generally how I'm getting on with this, this little engraving. So, we will cue time lapse and I will come to you at the end with my final thoughts. Here we are and I'm just getting stuck straight in and already this just feels smoother than when I tried the last one and maybe that's just because I've had a little bit more practice handling the tool. Um, but actually, this does feel lighter in my hand. That might be to do with the new motor. So the new motor, I think, is about 40% more powerful than the last one. Um, and it's lighter, so you've already heard the sound. But that small amount of weight actually does make a difference when you're handling any kind of tool. Um, I know that from pens and pencils and paintbrushes as well. Um, also important to note on this that the battery is improved as well. So the last one I think had a, a continuous battery life of about two hours. This uh, battery has double the capacity, so should have a battery operating power of around four hours, um, but it is, yeah, I mean, I've not tested that, so I don't know, but that's what it is uh, supposed to be. Um, the, the change in the grip is something that I was, I think, most surprised at. Just those uh, small changes to the that extra material in the grip to be able to hold on to, just makes it a more comfortable tool. I, I tend to get, and this is quite personal, but I tend to get quite sweaty hands when I'm doing something like this or when I'm holding kind of plastic tools and, and things. Um, and particularly metal in my hand, I get quite sweaty. I have to have like wooden handled knives in my kitchen and stuff because I get quite sweaty hands. But this, I, I didn't get very sweaty hands at all using it. And the, the just that extra bit of fluting on the grip made it so much easier to handle. I was super, super impressed. Another important thing to note is the vibrations in this felt much less. So I know some of you asked questions last time on how it felt, particularly because of my uh, previous hand tremors and problems with my grip because of my disability. Um, actually, I, I preferred this one. I think the, the vibrations were much fewer. Um, and was much, much easier on my wrist and my joints. In fact, I, I could have gone much, much further and I think I would have been absolutely fine. 
But yeah, all in all, I'm actually really impressed that such small differences uh, in the product can actually make such a big impact on the user experience. So I'm I'm really like this. I, I've now got two very good tools. One is a little bit better than the other, um, but the improvements that they've made to the tool are noticeable and are very, very welcome. So coming to this piece that I'm doing, I've done all of the outlining. I've just got a few bits of detail work to do as well. So I've been doing all of this with pointed tools so basically like I'm drawing and going over some of the lines a few times just to get different depths of things that I will also in this be doing a little bit of shading as well so I found this out last time if you use one of the ball headed burrs you can kind of go over and just give a, a basically shading to to whatever it is that you're drawing so there's a few minutes left of this uh, this time lapse. I'm going to let you enjoy the last few minutes of the creation of this gonk, and I will come back to you at the end with my final thoughts on this piece. And just like that, we are done. One thing I'll say about engraving is the more you practice it, the quicker you become. But here it is, hopefully you can see it. There is our little autumn festive gonk with a little spider hanging from his hat. I kind of want to stain this. I want to bring out even more of the details or even paint it. Maybe I'll do that in another video. Um, or just for fun, why not? Sometimes it's nice just to do bits of artwork for fun. But I am super, super impressed with this. I mean, it's such a nice compact box as well and will fit really nicely in my studio. Yeah, if I do want to take it out with me, of course we've got that cap to go on the top. All in all, I think this is a definite improvement on the version two. So if you are looking for an engraving tool that you can take out with you that is completely cordless, then why not check out the Coolier Customizer version three? And don't forget to use that code to get yourself a lovely discount on not just this, but anything on the Coolier website. As always, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and until next time, goodbye.